What's happening, people? Welcome to the United Stand match day again already. A couple of days um, after the AZ Alkmaar game is coming into the festive period. So the games are coming thick and fast. We're at home to Everton today in what is an absolute must-win game. I don't care what anyone says. We have to win this game. Um, yes, there's still a load of games left, and Solskjaer said in his press conference he's not thinking about fourth. But I guarantee you he is thinking about fourth, and I guarantee you the players will be. Um, yes, they've got to do it game by game, but if you're looking at it game by game, this is a game you look at and it, we can't afford to drop points. If we win today, it puts us two points off Chelsea. Chelsea um, obviously lost yesterday against Bournemouth. Who saw that coming? Um, and Wolves and Spurs are playing today. Sheffield United got another win. They're just not falling off, but you know we, we still go above them with a win today. And Arsenal play City. Um, and anything can happen in that game. So... It's important that we win today. Put, that, puts us to, that puts us two points behind Chelsea with Chelsea to play Spurs away next week when we're away to Watford. So, you know, we win both these next two games. We're top, we're top at Christmas. And who would, have, who would have thought that? It just goes to show Wait, how... Top at Christmas? At, at Christmas would be top, yeah. Top of what? We'll be top four. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 we'll be top of the league. No. <laughs> Steady on, Mars. Um, yeah, we'll be, we'll be top four by Christmas. Apologies if I did say we'll be top. I, I definitely didn't mean that. Um, we'll be top four by in the top four by Christmas, which look you you don't win the top four by being in it um, by Christmas. Chelsea have been in it for the majority of the season and now face the chance of not being in it at Christmas. So it's still going to be tight and there's a long way to go. But it's a good platform, it's a good basis, and it's where a lot of us as United fans, maybe not even top four to be fair, but they ex we expected us to be between six and fourth around there ish. And technically, Solskjaer's doing that. He, he's doing that. So for all the pressure that he's faced. With this squad, with what we all predicted as fans, 6th, 5th, 7th, 8th, 4th, wherever you thought, we're around those places. You know, we're, we're always one loss away from being 5th or 6th and one win away or a couple of wins away from being 4th. So, in reality, to where we are as a squad, yes, there's still question marks. Yes, there's still progress to be made. Yes, there's still players to be bought because we're not strong enough. But we're in there competing, whether it's because other teams have been poor and inconsistent, like a Chelsea. City, I mean, if City lose to Arsenal, which you, it, that wouldn't be completely out of the blue. If City lose to Arsenal, then there could be a chance even City could be looking at, you know, we could catch City. You, you just never know. Leicester dropped points yesterday. So it's all, it's all relative. But what I'm saying is there's a long way to go, but we've got to take care of business. Now, onto the game. Uh, Solskjaer said already in his press conference, it's going to be a difficult game. And with Duncan Ferguson at the helm for them, you're talking about new manager bounce backs. They've already had the bounce back at home to Chelsea. They wiped the floor with them. Um... And it was all about aggression, it was all about shithousery, scumbaggery, it was all about aggression, determination, 4-4-2 as well, you know. For me, the key errors today um, is if he goes, if, if, if Duncan Ferguson goes with 4-4-2 again and plays Richarlison and Calvert-Lewin up front, you know, Calvert-Lewin, it was a handful, you know. If he, if he sits on Lindelof, let's say, and then uh, you've got Richarlison off him, they can cause you problems, they can. Um, if they revert and change their formation and go with a 4-3-3 or a 4-5-1 or whatever um, and sit back and defend, then the, the big question mark is going to be on us, which we've struggled with um, across the whole season. So it's a chance for us to show either way that we are turning the corner and we can win games like this. Um, I, I, I personally think Ferguson will keep the 4-4-2. Um, I know we could be looking at it like it's Old Trafford, he might want to tweak it, but he hasn't really got a lot to lose. He's fighting for the job. Potentially, I know they're asking, they're looking at other candidates at Everton, but Ferguson will want that job. He's already, you can see the passion in him, you can see him wanting that job. And if he can get a, a result at United, that's not going to do him um, any uh, any negativity. It's not going to do him any wrong to, to, to give him a fight, to, a shout to get that job. So he's going to go for it. I think he's going to go for it. Why not? He's got nothing to lose. So they're going to be up for it. But for me, if we match Everton's determination and aggression, I think we win the game. It'll be tight. But I think we can, I think we can win. I well, definitely think we can win. We've just got to match their hunger and desire and earn our right to play because they're not going to let us play easy. If we if we if we turn up thinking, you know, that it's the same Everton that was under Marco Silva, then uh, we we got another thing coming. In terms of team selection for us, um, Jesse Lingard, I think I think I would I would like to see pretty much the same team that started against City. Um, if Lingard isn't fit, um, then obviously we'll see one change in there. But I don't, I can't see too much changes being made I mean you might change left back depending on how he's feeling um, at left back with injuries or, or, or fitness and stuff like that but I think Luke Shaw probably keeps his place um, and you could argue that rightly so I think he, he did alright he played well against um, 
City for me. Um, if you keep Bernardo Silva quiet, um, and then Mahrez came on and had, what, one shot. But, you know, I think by and large, Luke Shaw did all right. Um, but we're kind of all right in the left-back spot in terms of if Brandon Williams comes in, we'll all be happy with that. We'll be pleased to see that. Um, and Ashley Young, in the big games, he, he does all right, and he scored last game. So um, I'm not too, too worried. I mean, I know people are saying that the two and A be Lindelof thing, but I think Lindelof is still number one choice. Um, well, the, the, the selections would tell you that. He is still number one choice. Um, so I think as we were, the only, the only change, like I said, I want to see is, is um, if we have to change it because Jesse's not quite fit yet. And on Jesse Lingard, fair play to him. You've got some idiots out there saying, oh, yeah, well, anyone can look after their family. That's what we should be doing and trying to say, oh, look, at you know, people have been on Lingard's back. But from, his, from, his, um, from the way he's been playing, people have been on his back. But, you know, when someone comes out and says they're going through certain things or going through certain times, none of us know what people are going through at home. Um, but the fact he's come out, he spoke about it, um, I think everyone's behind him. And if you're not, then you're just an idiot, to be honest. Um, or if you're using that as a, as, a, as a way to try and get some leverage on social media or try and go against the grain, you're just a fool. Um, but that's all right. Um, so, yeah, so if Lingard's not playing, then you would think Pereira would probably be the first to come into that number 10 position. I, you know you know how Oli likes Pereira. Um, if not, Pereira's on the bench for me um, because Lingard's done well in the last two games against Spurs and... Um, last two games he's played against Spurs and City so for me must win game no excuses and I want to see pretty much the same team Miles what are you saying? Yeah I mean <clears throat> today obviously is, is massive like you know you didn't really expect Chelsea to drop points um, and now that they have like, we really just need to go and take it to um, Everton and try and get that win it, I, for me it just kind of shows how how poor the Premier League has been this season where we've done so badly but yeah with one little Chelsea defeat we're within a shout of you know yeah. closing the gap on top four and it's everyone knowing it because like everyone, City everyone. and Liverpool were kind of running away with it and City just fell off. Yeah. Then Leicester were the next ones in line. They drew yeah. to Norwich, pretty much handed the title to Liverpool. Yeah. Like everyone bar Liverpool has just been kind yeah. of inconsistent. I think ever since ours and Arsenal's downfall, the Premier League standard has just got worse and worse in my opinion mm. because the teams that have had to step up just aren't well or there aren't as many teams on that level anymore. Yeah. Um, so now you've got Leicester's creeping in walls in and around Sheffield even still hanging around there, do you mm. know what I'm saying? So... Um, yeah, today's huge. Like, I didn't really expect Chelsea to lose, and I didn't expect yeah. today to be as big as it as it is. Mm. But um, Oli's got to be positive, and for some reason, I feel like we will beat them convincingly. Yeah, uh, yeah, I do, I do. I just okay. think the where we were before, we had no hope of like even thinking of top four, or whatever. Yeah. But now that we're kind of in with a shout, and we have a bit of momentum on our side, even though you know it was against the bigger teams and we we're playing counter attack mm. football or not. Mm. I think this could be the, the motivation that we need to kind of turn our results around against the smaller teams mm. um, and try and pick that lock with the teams that will sit back a bit more um, and put like, yeah, two back to four behind. Because yeah. you know, Everton are kind of in that in-between bracket, innit, where they're not, they're not that crap where they just will just sit back like a, like a proper lesser team. But they're not amazingly good. Yeah. But they've got very good players that can hurt you. Exactly. That can hurt. And you. I think with with uh, with Ferguson, they're they're actually going to be even more on the front foot yeah. than they would have been they've with their the previous manager. They're not yeah. Us. Yeah, exactly. So actually, they may not want to just give us the ball. They may want to take control yeah. of, the, of the game yeah. and try and play at us. Yeah. And if we're smart, and if that's what they do, then. What I see from Oli is that he will be happy to sit back, soak up pressure, and then counter, yeah. even though they're not a big team. Yeah. So it really just depends on how uh, Everton's set up, really. Mm. Um, and then we've got to figure out what we're doing from there. We've got to be ready for both, innit? Got to be ready they, for they, both. Even at 4 4 2, they might just think, let's keep the ball, yeah. let's let them come onto us, yeah. and we can break because we've got numbers, we've got two strikers up there to occupy the centre halves. Or, like you said, they could just come out the traps yeah. and try and dominate possession. I think, I I think, think it'll will. be the latter. I, I, you know, I, think, I think with the 4 4 2, I think they will try and contain in spaces and press in the right areas to make it awkward for us, especially with two up front. So, when you've got two up front, it's a bit more difficult to play out, and one just has to press, and the other just kind of wraps around into that space yeah. behind the other striker. And it could be uncomfortable at times. It could. So. It's but Calvert Lewin puts it about. But if we dominate possession and move the ball quickly with intensity, I think we can pull Everton apart. Um, so it is, it's about like how both of us apply yeah, ourselves yeah, to this game, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. And, and like I said, if we match the motivation and desire that they're going to show, then um, we win the game. Exactly. Scoreline? Exactly. I say 3-1, man. I think our midfield will be key. Yeah. Um, I think Fred, Fred, Fred and Tormine are about, aren't they? Yeah. So yeah. Um, I feel like they are going to be what gets us that win and I feel like they're I just hope I just hope they carry on their good performances and if they do then I, I see us getting 
a convincing win. Rashford still confident, going to yeah, score. Hey, Rashford, Rashford's the yeah, He's still showing um, some form. I think he's going to be an absolute nuisance again today. Um, if he doesn't score, he'll win us a penalty. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like he, he's he's in that kind of form right now. Um, hopefully, Martial, Martial's yeah. I hope Martial, um, you know, shows a bit more form. And then if he does, then I think we can not only win this game but have a good run. You know, going into Christmas and the rest of the season. Yeah. Okay, cool. Mars going with a three-one win. I'm going to go with a two-one win. I think I think it'll be tight, um, but I do think we'll get the win. Especially, like I said, I don't I don't envision Solskjaer doing anything out out the, out the blue um, with team selection wise. There just there just isn't that feeling that for me. You can't really change the team too much from that City game. We played brilliantly well, and the City team didn't really even change too much from the Spurs game, um, apart from Mason Greenwood because Martial wasn't fit. So um, for me. Uh, he goes with pretty much the same team and we, and we get a positive result, 2-1. Could be 2-0, but I'm going to go with 2-1. I'll go with 2-1. So we'll see you guys um, after the fan comes, hopefully with a positive result. Um, and hopefully, um, I, you know, even a draw between City and Arsenal oh, wouldn't be yeah. too bad. Oh, wouldn't yeah. be too bad. Um, let us know your views and opinions in terms of team selection and the result in the boxes below. And we'll see you guys after fan comes. Peace. Thank you to you guys for watching the latest of our videos. And if you want to check out more, make sure you do that just to the right of me. We are the biggest and best Manchester United channel in the world. Make sure you check us out on all of the socials as well. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. The socials are along the bottom. Peace.